you were also still one of the top performers, I should say. What's your secret, non-secret, I guess, um, in getting a perfect customer satisfaction survey or CSAT? Yeah, um, well, yes, that's true, actually. I had a lot of perfect <laughs> Um I this is one thing of this is one of the things that I learned during training. I used to call it as the kiss, kick, kiss method. Mm -hmm. And I always apply that in all of the calls that I'll be or in all of the calls that I took. Um when you say the kiss, kick, kiss method, we have to kiss first, so we have to acknowledge first our customers' emotions and then do the kick, which is where the factual side would, would happen. So it's where you're gonna be explaining things. Tell them if you need to break the if you need to let's say tell them something which is a little disappointing for them or the thing that you can do so you're gonna insert that in the kick part and then kick again by making them understand the benefits of what you're gonna be doing or how will it help them. So you're basically trying to approach your conversation in the kiss, kick, kiss manner. Mm -hmm. Or I sometimes call it as the feelings first, facts follows. Mm, yeah. So Especially if our customers are very disappointed or upset, it's not going to be advisable for you to approach directly with the facts or with you explaining yeah. because they're not going to be listening to that or they're not going to appreciate that. You need to acknowledge the emotions first, so True. feelings first, then facts will yeah. follow. I agree, I agree. I like that. That's, a, that's yeah. an approach, yeah. That's, a, that's an approach to get perfect CSAT. Then, yeah. of course, you have to be very courteous, very kind, <laughs> very accommodating, the intonation, um, also the way you explain things to your customer. It must be very concise and clear. You have mm -hmm. to be very audible. Your customer must think that you know what you're doing, even though at some point you don't. You don't. You have to be sure about it. <laughs> but you need to make it appear that you are an, ex you are an expert because you should be and your customer will actually give you a perfect CSAT after the call. Yes, yes. So boost or the key and it's always like a nice <laughs> boost if you, if you get a perfect CSAT. And I agree with feelings first before facts because we're talking with humans. Even though, we've, yeah. uh, even though we're talking with, like, I don't know, it depends on how fast you are, but you're probably going to talk with almost 100 customers in one day. depends on your account. Yeah. <laughs> but... Life is, not, <laughs> yeah, life is not yeah. Life is not all rainbows and butterflies. So there are times when you when you also get a desat or dissatisfaction rating. And in those times, uh, how do you bounce back and how do you like handle it? You know what? There are there is this funny weird thing that I do whenever I have. Um, failed surveys. Mm -hmm. Whenever I have failed surveys, number one that I'll be looking at is my station. Okay. I would remember the station where I was seated, and I will never sit there again. <laughs> <laughs> I would always tell myself, I think there's something wrong with this station. Bad energy. <laughs> because this station cost me a failed seat. <laughs> and other than the station, I'll transfer to a different station. Then, other than the station, if it's not really possible to transfer, though, um, for me, the best way to really bounce back is to learn your opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, this is where the coaching sessions with your TLs or with your trainers would really play a lot. Um, you have to be very receptive to feedback. You need to learn or you need to understand what are the things that you could have done, what are the things that you should not be doing again and what are the things that you should be doing the next time and always tell yourself that there are plenty there are a lot of calls right there are plenty of calls that you'll be taking if you will be emotionally affected with a single failed survey and you won't be able to move on immediately from it the succeeding calls will also be affected mm -hmm. so you need to station yourself that it's just that single call that doesn't really create an impression of me entirely that yeah. The way the customer yeah. called, or the the way the way the customer said it, that I do not know. I don't know how to speak in English properly. They cannot understand me, or I don't know what I'm doing. So just limit that experience to that experience only, and don't give too much emotional burden from that experience because it would really 
attract the next cause. You know what? Sometimes yeah. I would always yeah. tell this to my friends and to my peers in the call center before that other than being other than learning the skill of being courteous, being accommodating, being an expert for our customers. In turn, then it helps us how to move on right away. Oh my God, We're yeah. very good in moving <laughs> on already because yeah, imagine yeah. from a very, um, let's say, call. from a very disheartening, stressful call in a split second because there's another call that you need to attend, you have to move on, yes. right? Imagine from a, a very sorry, thank you for, you have to be energetic again. So yeah. you really have to move on that quick. Right. So moving on is very important. <laughs> it's nice that you mentioned that because now I realize it's true. It's kind of uh, a skill that we have mastered as well, that you have to shift your emotion right after having a very stressful call, um, hoping that the next call would be a lot nicer and a lot easier for That's you. That's true. And then you, you don't and really you have... And if you notice sometimes... So, sorry, you don't really have time to yeah. process <laughs> your feelings, <laughs> Right. Yes, that's true. Even sometimes, um, even in our daily lives, yeah. if we experience some stressful events personally, we sometimes, we already, we already have that skill like, ah, okay, so it's like that. And yeah. I, just, I, I don't need to be affected that much. Then move on I and agree. then proceed with that next part of your life. Yeah. So that's one of the things that being a call center have, have taught me a lot. And yeah. I've been applying that up until this day. <laughs> Yeah, I right feel away. like <laughs> I feel like uh, sometimes I might come off as insensitive because I'm like, okay, so that happened. Um, we've learned from it. Let's move on to the next. So there's really no time to grieve and who what happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think that's a blessing in disguise for us because you know with everything that's happening, it's um, I guess we're more equipped to handle our emotions better now. Uh, because of the many yeah. different types of customers that we've handled in the BPO industry. So, wow, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, as a finale... What was the yeah. funniest thing? Funniest thing that you've encountered while talking to customers? Well, there are a lot of bloopers, actually. A lot of call center agents can definitely resonate with this one. Right. With having a lot of bloopers. But for me, um, I would consider this as a bit funny and sort of a little adjustment because I was still new at that time. Mm -hmm. When I started taking calls, or first few days of taking calls, my trainer would always tell me to, or I think it's part of the call flow that we need to get some numbers from our customers, or basically pieces of information such as the um, the card number and their social security, all those things, and other information coming from them. I don't know. At some point <laughs> during that time, I really find it difficult to understand the numbers mm. from the customers. Difficult in a way that I cannot clearly. I, I'm not sure if it's just me or is it my headset or it's the customer, or I cannot really understand the numbers. Mm -hmm. I really don't like it every time. I need to ask for the 16-digit card number of the customer <laughs> because so it's very long. <laughs> and that means there are a lot of numbers that they need to tell me. And they really find it difficult to capture it. I would remember there was this call that the customer was really frustrated because they cannot really understand the numbers. Mm -hmm. he, would, he ended up telling me or saying it to me this way. It's seven. Seven, the number after six, the number before eight. And then it has, oh, seven. Yes, seven. And then the next uh, the next number, like three, the number after two, before four. Oh, three. Then I realized right after the call, I, I told my husband, oh, shit, as if I'm. It's like a kindergarten. It was, yeah, it was a kindergarten approach. And, but you know what? some point I ended up using that manner or that approach <laughs> to my other customers like for some other customers if I'm really having difficulty like, some are referring to number nine the number before eight I mean the number after eight oh my God. So, yes okay <laughs> so it became like another strategy for me to understand the numbers until later on finally after num after after hundreds of calls I was able to master mm. capturing the digits Finally, but this, this is very difficult for me. I don't know. I can understand their question. I can understand what they're talking about, what happened to their accounts, what's their problem. But 
when it comes to numbers that time, it was very difficult for me to understand it. Yeah, and I think you're not Later alone on, in that. Thing, I was able to improve that. <laughs> yeah, you're not alone yeah. in that. I, I did get some comments before asking me what if like, the customer would say the numbers really really fast and they won't be able to catch up. Um, I, I do have a video about that as well and how to handle fast talking customers. Maybe I'm just going to link the the video up on the cards, but it's a good yeah, thing that you true. mentioned that. <laughs> And because sometimes they make, they'll, they'll talk really fast exactly. and we can actually understand <laughs> and the accent sometimes. Yeah, and we're always, uh, we're always reminded that when we speak with customers, uh, of course, would have to be professional, but also would have to explain things as if we're explaining something to a kid. Uh, it should be like the simplest way or the simplest manner. So maybe in your case, that was like the easiest way for the customer to help you get the, the card yes. number just to get it over with, <laughs> right? Yeah, I was actually very, I was thankful and also surprised, surprised with my with that customer because who would have thought that I like, Oh, yeah, why not do it this way? <laughs> it's easier for me to understand the numbers. Yeah. So and that customer was able to give me that strategy. And I think uh, it's also one of the reasons also is uh, the barrier, of course, the tech barrier. Right? You don't always get what the other person is saying because you're just talking over the phone and there are no cues. And that is also one of the skills True. that... Um, agents have to master and I'd say over time you'd be able to get used to it just like it happened to you maybe at first you're just panicking because there are a lot of numbers <laughs> but then after that you'll get yeah, used to it <laughs>